Well, in the Smash 4's lifespan, Nintendo released a pack of Inkling Amiibos, and we were so sure that Inklings would be dropping as the next DLC. Well, we were wrong. Splatoon representation in Smash seemed like an obvious choice, and it was, but just not quite when we expected it. In a Nintendo Direct on March 8, 2018, the presentation concluded with an announcement of the Octo expansion for Splatoon 2. A nice bit of content for Splatoon fans, but an all-too-familiar letdown for the rest of us expecting something big from Nintendo. But then, producer Yoshiaki Koyazumi suddenly remarked that they actually had one more thing to show off. He snapped his fingers in signature Switch brand fashion, and the screen faded white. A few seconds later, orange ink splattered on the ground. Was it just another Splatoon announcement? Many of us wondered. As the orange and blue inklings came into view and familiar music played, we could confirm that this was Splatoon related, but something felt different. With no warning, the screen suddenly faded black, with only the Inkling girl's vague silhouette remaining. She slowly turned around as a bright light came into view, and the reflection in her eyes became our first ever reveal of what would become Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch. And the rest is history, but this was also technically the character reveal trailer for Inkling as a fighter in the new game. Inklings come in multiple costumes with many male and female Squid Kids to choose from, and cement themselves as the first newcomer in Ultimate. Competitively, Inkling was seen as a top-tier character in the very early meta. Her nimble mobility, quick back air, and active fare drew many comparisons to Diddy Kong, who had been very strong in both Smash 4 and Brawl. Inkling performed well in tournaments as Cosmos would become her strongest main, placing top 8 at many large tournaments. As time went on, however, Cosmos' results became less consistent. On top of this, many other Inkling mains, and recently Cosmos himself, would pick up different characters. Inkling developed a reputation of being a character who couldn't close out stocks, and the general impression of her lowered, with some players even dropping her out of top tier. So for our question of the day, do you think Inkling is top tier or high tier? We're gonna take a closer look, so let us know what you think in the comments. Want to become a great Inkling main yourself? Click on over to ProGuides.com. There you'll find detailed guides on every character. And that's not all. We've got live classes where you can play with pros, courses taught by top players, an Instapro that connects you with tons of skilled coaches. You can also check out the Pro Guides community on Reddit and Discord. As usual, we first need to understand what makes Inkling good enough to be considered top tier by those who still believe in the character. It's natural to start by looking at movement, and with Inkling, we see something very interesting. Inkling's dash and run animations turn her into her squid form, in which she travels through the ground in a temporary trail of ink. The animation is extremely unique, as it significantly reduces Inkling's exposed hurtbox while moving, even enough to avoid certain attacks such as Wolf's Laser. Inkling also has an above-average initial dash and run speed, resulting in a character that has arguably the best ground movement in the game. This is furthered by Inkling's affinity for grabs, making Dash Dance Grab a fantastic option for the Squid Kid. Inkling also has great airspeed and decent acceleration, which helps her edge guard, adding to the overall great movement this character has. When we take a look at her moveset, Inkling has the tools to play a dominant and versatile neutral game. We already mentioned her incredible dash dancing ability, which can be used skillfully to weave around opponent's attacks and swiftly whiff punish with her quick dash grab. Inkling also has one of the best back airs in the game. With only 6 frames of landing lag, this move is incredibly safe. It's minus 2 on shield with the sweet spot, which basically means you'll never get punished for a well-spaced bear. Inkling Bear comes out on frame 7, making it a solid out of shield option, especially since its low angled hitbox is perfect for hitting grounded characters. A falling back air will even hit characters hanging on the ledge! Back air is Inkling's go-to aerial and neutral. She can pressure shields, zone out approaches, and whiff punish with this move. On hit, it also creates great low percentage follow-ups into jab and grab. Inkling's jab is frame 3 and presents a new mechanic, Ink. Inkling has an ink tank that is depleted when she uses rapid jab, neutral B, down B, and side B. Connecting these moves will apply ink to the opponent or the ground, which has special benefits. The damage that an opponent receives is increased proportionally to how much ink is on their body, with a maximum multiplier of 1.5 times. On the ground, ink will slow opponents down. The ink mechanic allows Inkling to possess great damage output in simple combos, and she has plenty of combo potential too. Inkling's up throw offers follow-ups from 0 all the way to kill percents. At low percents, she can go for an up air or neutral air. These follow-ups work at mid percents too, and can be extended with the aid of platforms. At kill percents, Inkling will go for up throw to up air to close out stocks. 
Although very tight, this is a true combo on nearly every character and something that any top Inkling player has mastered. Back air is certainly an amazing aerial for neutral play, but Inkling has some useful tricks with Nair as well. Nair is Inkling's fastest aerial at frame 6, and in addition to having a shockingly low 5 frames of landing lag, this move has almost no lag in the air, giving her enough time to throw out another Nair or even a back air before landing from a short hop. Between those aerials and her amazing dash dance grab game, Inkling excels in neutral, but she's also fantastic offstage. For starters, Inkling has easily one of the best recoveries in the entire game. Her up special, Super Jump, travels extremely far and shrinks her hurtbox significantly during startup. The initial hit of this move is very weak, which actually makes it convenient for gimping those who burn their jump trying to edgeguard Inkling. Even if Inkling opts to land on stage with this move, a tricky splash hitbox appears when landing, presenting a small challenge for those attempting to punish it. She also gets an additional jump by canceling her roller in the air, so Inkling can go super deep for edgeguards and make it back with ease. Back air will also be one of Inkling's most reliable edgeguarding tools. Being fairly low in cooldown, she can swing multiple bears before needing to recover. Forward air offers its own edgeguarding benefits as well. The initial hitbox is stronger than back air, making it better for scoring KOs offstage, and it remains active with a weaker hit that can cover more space. For edge guarding as well as ledge trapping, Inkling has another unique tool. The Splat Bomb is her down special, a timed explosive that also activates on contact. The Splat Bomb will cover the opponent with ink and also launches them away. Since she can control its trajectory, Splat Bomb is effective both for covering ledge or sniping opponents as they attempt to recover. So closing out stocks is one of Inkling's biggest weaknesses, but she actually can kill you really early if you aren't careful, and that's with Roller. Inkling's Roller applies ink to the ground and will bury any grounded opponent in its path. This burial gives her a chance for a follow-up before the opponent mashes out, and will lead to decently early kills from smash attacks. But at top level, Rollers will be hard to land as it loses to shield and doesn't bury aerial opponents. This is one of many factors that culminate in Inkling's biggest weakness, getting the kill. Finding a roller confirm or an up throw up air are more or less the only way for this character to close out stocks before really high percents. Roller is easy to avoid as mentioned, and up throw up air only works for a brief window. Otherwise, back air won't kill until around 180 most of the time. Forward air kills a little bit earlier, but is pretty slow. Up air is even slower, and that's all she has besides for raw smash attacks and edge guards. This makes matchups against heavier characters and those with great recoveries difficult, and is likely the primary reason for Cosmos picking up Pikachu as a co-main. Still, Cosmos has not dropped the character completely, nor has Chag, who uses her alongside Palutena, or even Spargo, who uses her for Cloud's bad matchups. Europe's strongest inkling player, Space, has performed well in his region, defeating Gluttony, as well as Mr. R and Armada. At the moment, Inkling is hard to judge. Her best main has used the character less, and even then she wasn't mained by a top 10 player. Looking at top player opinions, Inkling's reception exceeds her overall results. Tweak, Samsora, and MKLeo all place the character in top tier, with Tweak going as far as placing her in top 3. Inkling is a character with an extremely reliable moveset that gives her an answer to just about any situation. Her lack of kill power is a prominent weakness, but it's also one that can be made up for a player by their skill, and isn't the kind of weakness that makes her vulnerable or exploitable. She may not have the most impressive results recently, but that hasn't stopped the best players in the world from considering her a top tier, and we agree, Inkling is top tier. What do you think? Be sure to let us know and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more from Pro Guides.